It's a fantastic video. day. Fuck yeah. What we're gonna do here today, this video is all about fishing yellowtail on the dropper loop. So we're gonna show you how Captain Dave rigs his dropper loop. Now, you may have a way better way, and that's okay. I'm not going to tell you your way's the wrong way, and I'm not going to tell you my way's the right way. This is, I like to use the shine, when I'm using a dropper loop fishing for yellowtail, I like to use a shiny torpedo sinker. Why? Because yellowtail are super curious, okay? They're super curious. So if you can find one that's shiny like this, if, if you can find one that's chrome looking or silver looking, that's fine. If not, you can take it and rub it on the dock or rub it on your deck and it'll make it all shiny. It'll shine up that lead. If you just rub it on something rough, it'll shine it up. That's the key, you want it shined up. Now how I tie on my is, I just do the same knot that I use. If you go to my knot video and look, I just wrap it around seven times and I pinched it right there. That made that little loop right there. I just put it right through that little loop and pull it down tight. So, let's see. You gotta get that little tag in and then you just pull it down tight. There it is, it's tied on. So then we just take our our clippers and we clip it nice and neat right there. I know, those are some good clippers. I don't wanna hear about, oh, you're dentist and all that shit. I'm 60 years old, I've been cutting it that way for 60 years, my teeth are still working, I know. Those of you that are dentists, you're like, oh my God, Dave just cut the line with his teeth. Yeah, he does it every day. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is about tw 24 inches above the weight. I'm going to make a blood knot. So I'm gonna take the line, make a loop, then right in the middle where the two pieces of line come together, I'm gonna to wrap them four times, just like this. One, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna take this big part of the loop, stick it through the hole, and then slowly pull those two together. That's a blood knot. Okay, now, most people will just hook their hook onto this. Okay, that blood knot right there, they'll just hook their hook onto this big loop. Remember, like I say in all my videos, these fish that we're fishing for, they're not stupid. They've been fished a lot. That's a big, if you put your hook on there, that's a big bunch of line for that fish to see. So if I put my hook right there and that, that's going to be something for the fish to see. So here's how I do it. I take my clippers, I clip this with my clippers, okay? Now this knot, if you tied the blood knot proper, it doesn't matter which side of the loop you clipped off. If you tied this blood knot proper, it's not coming untied. I take my hook and I simply tie it right to that little end that was sticking out that I just clipped off. I'll tie my hook right to that, go around seven times, put it through the bottom hole. That creates this top hole. I go right back through there, pull it down tight, clip it off with my custom clippers. You can get a pair of these clippers too for about $20,000. But there you go, clip it nice and neat so that it's right there. Now, this is how I'm gonna fish my dropper loop, okay? The hook's 24 inches above the weight. Why, why? Because yellow, if you've ever seen a yellowtail, their mouth is in front of them. It's not on their bottom. It's not like a, it's not like a uh, plunger, if you will. So if every time you fish with the dropper loop and all you catch, is bat rays and shovel nose sharks and, and uh, leopard sharks. That's because your weight is setting on the, if you go here and look at this weight, your weight's laying on the bottom, but your loops, your hook's not tied far enough up, so your bait's laying on the bottom. 
But see, my weight is sitting on the bottom. Look up here. And the hook's way up here. So if you think about it, that's suspended off the bottom. Those yellowtail are swimming around, but they're not laying on the bottom. And they're not swimming up on the top. They're fish down there in the water column about 12 to 14, 20 inches off the bottom. That's why we're going to put our dropper loop above that. See that, how it works? So here, we drop it down to the bottom. My macro is setting here just above it. If you start to scan up with the camera, you'll see how far up it is. Now that mackerel is swimming around in circles right here. And that's where that yellowtail is going to eat this thing at, all right? So hopefully you understand that part of this dropper loop setup. Now we're going to go in sh outside. We're going to hook on a mackerel. We're going to drop it down the bottom, show you how that whole thing works. All right, now film me. All right, gang. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the proper way to deploy the dropper loop. Because when you're fishing a dropper loop, you don't want to cast it out there five miles and throw the bait out. 90% of the time, the guys always ask me, hey, Cap, are you marking any? And I go, yep, right under the boat. And then the guys cast out a mile. I'm marking them under the boat. That means the fish are under the boat. Don't cast. You're going to drop a dropper loop straight down. That's why it's called a dropper loop. Bizarre, I know. but. Don't cast a dropper loop out. You drop dropper loop goes dropped straight down. That's a dropper loop, gang. We would call it a caster loop if we wanted you to cast it out. It's called a dropper loop because we want you to drop it straight down over the side. So look, we got our sinker. We got everything tied up like we showed you. We're gonna take our hook. We got a mackerel right here in the bucket. We're just gonna show you quick and easy. We're gonna use a mackerel, okay? Yeah, a little Spanish mackerel right here. We're gonna nose hook it. If you look, right in the front of these, when God made these, he made a spot for your hook. It's already set up. It's got a couple holes there, the nostrils. You go right through there, side to side. It's kind of tough. It's a good spot though. Quit wiggling. You go right through there and you drop it straight down to the bottom. Now look, bring it over here to the reel. When you drop your drop, when you, Whenever you're holding your rod, your fishing pole, your rod, index finger goes on the spool. Index finger on the spool, thumb on the trigger. When you're dropping it down, you're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay? When it gets down there, the line's going to stop going out. How many times have you been bit when you're letting it out? A lot of times. So if your hand is back here and your other hand is itching your butt or picking your nose, you're not going to be in position. You want to have your index finger on the spool, your thumb on the trigger, so when it starts to take off super fast, you just click it in gear and start catching your fish. Now, this has made it all the way down to the bottom. So the weight is, if Chuck was to bring it out here to the tip, you'll see. See how it's all loose right there? That lets me know the weight is laying on the bottom. So then I'll take a half a crank off the bottom and I set with the reel, look back over here. I set with the reel in gear with the dropper loop. That mackerel setting down there on the bottom and swimming around in circles. Oh, we're getting a bite already. Bring it out to the tip. So we got that there. We got our right hand on the handle our left hand's always in front of the reel when that fish bites we are hand on the handle if you look at the tip now go back to the tip you'll see it t tap 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 that's the mackerel swimming around when the yellowtail grabs it it's going to actually pull the tip down into the water you're going to drop your tip when it gets straight down and you feel a steady pull, I'm going to tell you to take two cranks and lift up hard, set that hook, drive that hook out of the mackerel and into the yellowtail's mouth. But when you're using a dropper loop, you're always fishing in gear. We're not letting them run with it. We're making sure that the weight is tapping the bottom and then we're back in gear. And we're just letting that mackerel stay right down on the bottom. It's super important to always be checking the bottom and making sure your mackerel is staying on the bottom. Now, a lot of times your mackerel is going to be too strong for your weight. 
Let me show you something that we do to these mackerel when they're too strong for the weight, okay? We're gonna take our, we're gonna take our real clippers this time. We have a pair of clippers. Now the mackerel's swimming around too much and it won't let the weight sink down to the bottom because he's, so we're gonna cut off part of his motor. Watch, Chuck. You clip off part of his motor. It could be the top fin or the bottom fin. Now he's still alive. We haven't injured him. It's like cutting your toenails. Now though, he's not gonna have a tendency to swim that around so much. It's gonna keep that weight down on the bottom. That is a trick that we picked up 45 years ago. Clip your mackerel's tail. That'll keep him right on the bottom. He won't be swimming that weight around, but he'll still be swimming like a son of a bitch, but he won't be going anywhere. Okay, then we'll drop him back down to the bottom. We'll show you one more time how to properly put this bait on the bottom. Okay, we're going right back down to the bottom. Come to the reel. Index finger on the spool, thumb on the trigger. In free spool, dropping it down. It's going down to the bottom right now. When it gets to the bottom, we know what happened. The line stops going out. Look at that. The line stopped going out. That means we're on the bottom. Now we go into gear and we make sure we can feel it tapping. You see the tip. The mackerel's still swimming around down there. He's still tapping the tip. Then when the yellowtail grabs it, it's going to be a pull. It's going to pull on it. It's going to pull the tip down into the water. We take two cranks, pull up hard, try to break the rod, set the hook, and then keep winding till the fish comes in. That is dropper loop fishing. Any other way, if your sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncle told you to hold this reel different, hold the rod different, they're lying to you. I wouldn't brag about, oh, I don't hold it. First thing you're doing is you're watching this video and you go, oh, I don't hold my rod that way. Or I don't hold my fishing pole that way. I don't hold the reel that way. Well, then you're doing it wrong. And why would you brag about doing something wrong? This is how if you ever watch any professional fishermen, guys that fish for a living every single day, not comic book characters on Instagram that caught a fish once, I'm talking about guys that fish every single day for a living. This is exactly how they hold the rig. The left hand goes in front, index finger on the spool when they're letting the line out, thumb on the trigger, instantly into gear, ready to go, ready to catch a fish. This is the right way. Any other way is the wrong way. And if you're sitting there with your wife or your husband or your boyfriend and you're telling them, well, that's not how I hold it, quit bragging about doing it wrong because you're doing it wrong. And I'm sorry. All I'm trying to do is teach you the right way to do everything. Now, look, if you just watch YouTube videos to watch people catch fish, then you're on the wrong channel. I am the guy that teaches you how to catch those fish so that you can be the guy that other people are filming catching fish. If you want to watch people catch fish, then go to some other channel. I'm going to teach you how to catch them. That's all I know how to do is how to kill fish. That's all I've ever done my whole life. That's how I bought my houses, my cars, got my beautiful wife. It's all about catching fish and that's what I'm trying to teach you all how to do. Index finger on the spool, thumb on the trigger, left hand in front of the reel. Drop your dropper loop down to the bottom. Wait for that big giant whopper yellowtail to grab it. Reel it up. Take a picture. There we go. We released our bait proper. We don't have to worry about none of that stuff. It's all over. Thanks for joining us today. This is how you store it in between trips. You just wrap the wrap the weight around your handle. Randall, your hook's up here along the line. Remember, never hook your hook onto your guides. These ceramic guides will chip and break. You don't put your hook on the ceramic guides. You don't put your weight on the ceramic guide. You wrap the line around your handle, because that way you're ready when it's time to drop down, when your captain gets you on the fish again, and he says, all right, let him go. All you do is unwrap this, pin your mackerel onto that hook, and drop it down to the bottom. It's pretty simple. Don't be a booger eater. Don't make it harder than it is, and don't brag about doing it wrong. All right, thanks for joining us.